Mm -mm -mm. All right. What is up, you guys? Um, so I don't know how my audio is. I hope it's good. Uh, I wanted to go live um, because I haven't done it in a little bit, and I'm sorry about that. I've just been working a whole bunch. Um, because I'm going to be going on vacation Well, I plan on going on vacation in April. And so I wanted to make sure that I had my funds in order for that. But I also wanted to make sure that I did uh, a school for you all. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I think someone asked about Baylor on one of my most recent videos. And then I noticed that Baylor was one of the top PA programs in the U.S. So why not um, do them? If you guys want me to do another, like any other uh, PA program, not tomorrow, because I work tomorrow, but the day after, um, let me know in this video's comments and I will do that, okay? Um, I just want to check YouTube really quickly to make sure that I am actually live and I all of my settings are correct. And then we'll go from there, okay? Um, I hope you guys have been doing well and, you know, I hope you guys are having a great start to the new year. Is it still like, can we still talk about that? Can we still talk about like new year and stuff? Cause we're in February now, but whatever. It's neither here nor there. All right. Let me check this. It says I'm live. It says it's Baylor. Great. We're good to go. So let's go. I'm going to share my screen with you guys very, very shortly uh start screen sharing and oh okay i don't even know hold on so this is the first time i'm using this on my newest computer okay so let me see, a lot of apps to Okay, I hope this can work. So let's go to a tab and I want this one and I say, all right, can you guys see my screen? If you can, please say yes. Um, Cause I wanna make sure that you guys can see this and I want it to look like this. Okay, I think you guys can see it because I'm seeing it in my tab down here. So this is Baylor College of Medicine. This is their PA program. Um, let me put my glasses on because my screen here is like a little, the light is like blinding me. It really doesn't make that much of a dis difference actually. Okay, so uh, this is their program. They have a DNP program, nurse and anesthesia um, which is cool for anybody uh, that is interested in that because um, nurse anesthetist, uh, I think it's like a really good career to get into just saying, um, I don't hate. So <laughs> um, if you guys are interested in that, you should check their program out for that as well. But we're here for the physician assistant program. Okay. So it says admissions. I like how everything is laid out. I'm looking at this class here. This is a class of 2022 um receiving their white coats uh is there is it diverse let's see you guys do i see a lot of diversity here mm, um i see a person of color here here he's like racially ambiguous here there we go all right i mean there's it's there's some diversity i you know my my hope and desire is that our PA programs can become more and more diverse. I really, really want that because you're serving such a diverse population in terms of the United States, um, you know, and we're getting more and more diverse as the days go by that it would be really nice uh, to reflect that in our providers. Um, I know that I feel really great and comfortable and happy when I see somebody that looks like me, um, you know, come into the room to talk to me about something. And uh, I know that a lot of my patients have expressed that to me as well. So, you know, PA programs, NP programs, med school programs, just healthcare in general, please take notice of your patient population and do that. So that's just like my little soapbox of the day. 
All right. It says our program is ranked first in Texas and third in the nation by U.S. News and Report. So this is what I was saying. It is one of the top pro, um, PA programs in the United States. Mm, it says the diversity of clinical setting in Texas Medical Center, um, the world's largest medical complex that ensures you have the opportunity to explore the full range of practice options open to PAs. All right. That's cool. Um I like this. Let's let's hit the faculty up really quickly since it's right here on the main screen. So we have Miss um, Clark, Patrick Elliott. She is the program director. Some of your associates. All right. So, oh, the medical doctor, Doctor Atten Atkinson. It's cool. Okay. I see a lot of women. A lot, a lot of women. A lot of women. All right, that's kind of cool. You know, it's very highly what female ran. Um, I saw only one male. Wait, maybe no, Miss Ismet, yeah, assistant professor. How am I reading this? Let's see, program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. He is senior faculty. Um, he was a professor, Carl Emil Fasser. That's the only email that I saw. So um, that is interesting. I like it. I don't know. I'm a little biased to my females. Um, curriculum, whatever. I, I, You guys can look at the curriculum if you're interested in that. I really care about now is admissions. So let's go to admissions. Okay, so the application process... So they are a CASPA participating program, meaning that you have to go through CASPA to actually apply to the school. Not every program requires that, but this program does. Um, the payment for supplemental applications must be received by August 1st. When is their, and that's supplemental fee. When is their action, is this, I don't know what this means. Um, let's just, let me just, pop over to CASPA really quickly to their participating programs to see exactly um, when. Okay, so August 1st is when you have to have uh, this, this program like set, okay? Like you have to make sure that you're, you have applied to Baylor by August 1st. That's essentially what is being said. Um, a screening during the second stage of review, PA program faculty screen and rank all eligible candidates through a holistic set of criteria reviewed by the PA program um, admissions committee. Uh, I like that they say holistic, meaning that they're not just going to be looking at your GPA and you know um, what you did from an academic standpoint, but holistically as a prospective student, you, you know, like what you did volunteer wise, what you do for your patient care experience, all of those things will um, be will come into play. And a lot of schools do that. But the fact that they make mention of it kind of makes you think that it's more than just grades. Um, but you never really know, honestly. Interviews. So there's three stages. Uh, obviously, you apply, then you will get your your application will get reviewed, and then hopefully you get an offer to interview. Okay. Um, so this needs updating. Um, obviously, it, it might likely be 2022 because they're still in that 2021, 2022 cycle. So all of this information um, pertains to their interviews that took place in 2022. I don't know if literally it's just these three interview days that they have. Um, let's see. The third, this, blah, blah, blah. The specific dates of interviews are decided by the PA program admissions committee interview in Invitees are asked to acknowledge the acceptance of, of the offer for interview to the PA admissions within seven calendar days. The max, a maximum of 150 applicants are interviewed. So likely maybe I would say 50 or so, um, we'd say 50 uh, invitees per day. Um, so they just kind of knock it out all within a short period of time, a three-day period, and you say, wow, well, wait. Um, which is kind of scary, but cool at the same time, because you know that you, you'll you hear back from them within a timely fashion. 
um, the top 40 applicants are offered admissions. Uh, so their, their uh, cohort is a 40 class, 40 student cohort. Um, and you're informed within two weeks of interviews. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So I love hearing back from the interview um, committee, uh, admissions committee early. And so, you know, don't have me up in limbo, like waiting a long period of time just to hear back from you. Um, let me know, you know, did I get in or did I not get in? That's what I need to know. All right. Prerequisite requirements. Like, let's look at this. Due to COVID, the Baylor College of Medicine PA program will accept online lab courses completed in spring of 2020, summer of 2021, and fall of 2021. Subsequent laboratory courses should be completed in person. All right. So if you are applying to this program, and you know, this is what kind of COVID did for a lot of schools, um, they're kind of like forced to pivot and really accept um, online courses and online teaching um, because everything was done through, you know, a pandemic where we were forced not to go and, you know, go to school be, or be in school in person. And so um, if if you took any class from uh, 2020 to 2021 uh, that was a laboratory class online, then you're, you'll be fine. You're good to go. All right. So their minimum GPA uh, is a 3.2. Okay. And so this is a little bit different than some of the programs that we've seen in the past because uh, the majority of those programs that I have kind of reviewed and gone over, their minimum GPA requirement is a 3.0. Uh, but this just goes, again, to show you that their standard is a little bit higher. A 3.2 um, overall is the minimum. So definitely you're trying to hit higher than that. So you're probably shooting for like, I would say 0.4 above that. So like a 3.6, 3.7, um, if at all possible uh, for both your overall and your science GPA. Okay. All right. Course specific requirements. All applicants must complete uh, the courses below that I'll scroll down to with a grade of C or higher, which is standard. Um, the science courses must be taken for science majors, not nursing, health professionals, or health science majors. So it literally has to be um, for like your science majors. And um, I know like for me, when I was an undergrad, we had to take um, general chemistry. That was the chemistry that we were taking for science majors. But my friends that were in nursing, they were taking inorganic chemistry. So there's a slight bit of a, a difference um, for what is required for their nursing degree and what was required for my biomedical sciences degree. So um, just be mindful of this. Be mindful when you're choosing your courses uh, that they are for science majors and not for any of the other like allied health um, science courses. All right, so these are their prerequisite requirements. So, of course, anatomy and physiology, um, micro and genetics, um, your chemistries. Uh, so, general chemistry one and two, and then they would like organic chemistry. Um, they want, what is this? So, psychology, um, one of the humanities electives, so sociology maybe another like a higher level psychology. So probably like a developmental or um, abnormal psych is what you would take as this elective here. Um, and then expos expository writing slash, okay. So just the general English, your English comp. Not really sure why you need that course. Um, I haven't really seen that as a requirement for any other PA schools that I had looked at when I was applying and then any other schools that we have obviously reviewed, but it's interesting. Okay. And then statistics. Um, all science courses must be intended for science majors. Okay. So they're making a big point of this. So do not apply to this program if your science courses are not intended for science majors because you're not going to meet the requirement and therefore you would be wasting your money and you're not going to get accepted. Okay, it's just as simple as that. Um, I try to like tell you guys this because I made this mistake in the past and I know people that's made mistakes like this where we think, oh, okay, you know what, it's okay. My GPA is great, I've done this, I've done that. Like they can look past this one little thing and it's not the case because they have so many applicants. Like 
like, who are you, right? You know, like, who are you, this one person who's like, okay, let me skirt past the rules or, you know, try to feel like you can um, essentially like be above the law, I guess you could say. Um, and to, to now not do what is required when 500 other students was able to do what is required. And that's really kind of how you have to look at this. This is not about you. This is about what their requirements are. So I'm just saying, I'm just letting you know. Okay. Um, so minimum required courses cannot be waived. See, not waived. Uh, we already talked about that. Prerequisite science courses cannot be more than seven years old and non-science coursework cannot be more than 10 years old at the time of the application deadline. Um, so for any of my uh, non-traditional um, or not like directly out of PA, uh, undergrad trying to apply to PA school or like even within two years of um, coming out of undergrad trying to apply to PA school, if that is not you, um, play close, pay very, very close attention to this because Again, you would have gone to school for four years. So already your your 10 year margin is now cut down to you have six years to apply to PA school and get in. OK, and so if you take a gap year or two, now you <laughs> now you're now you have four years. OK, and so like the time is is constantly like kind of trying to catch up on you and it's like nipping at your your heels if you are not a traditional um, student and so you have to really like pay attention to these little tidbits of information that these programs put on here um, with respect to you know their their requirements in terms of how long coursework needed to have been completed okay um and then I don't think we really need any of this information. Uh, let's look at there. Let me just see what. So they do have a supplemental application. Their supplemental application is fifty dollars. Um, so just just for your aware and to be aware. Okay. Um, so that was prerequisites. So let's look at tuition and fees. Um, you know, I had I've had a lot of people talking to me about tuition and fees uh, because I did a program whose like tuition was one hundred and fifty thousand or something like that. And then I did a video. So if you have not watched my video on why is PA school so expensive, go ahead and watch that video. Um, I'll probably have a follow up video on that because somebody sent me some really, really good information you know who you are. Um, I'll mention you on the video uh, about just like another reason why PA school may be so expensive and, you know, not to give these PA programs a pass because, hey, they're making bank. So um, I may do a follow up video on that. So stay tuned and go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Um, but financial assistance, you can get financial assistance um, by uh, calling the Office of Student Financial Aid. They'll help you get like grants and loans and things like that. Um, and so this program is in Houston. So you'd have to like look at uh, housing in Houston. So this is a typo. It says the BCM physician program, but it should say like physician assistant program, right? Is committed to recruitment and retention of diverse students. Oh, are you? Let's look at their diversity statistics report. Sure. Um, all right. So by gender, again, females always outrank males when it comes to PA programs. That's just kind of how it is um, across the board. Uh, so not very um, shocking to me. Uh, this race and ethnicity thing is also not very shocking, uh, like almost 70 percent for whites um, and for non Caucasian, uh, you make up that other uh what 56 percent but uh, i mean to me i i would like to see this pie even a little bit probably like more half um so like you know maybe 50 percent uh whites and anybody that is non-white or identifies as a person of color can be in the other part of the pie but sure okay um look at african-americans here 
very dismal, 5%. Uh, Asians, 18%. Hispanics, 12%. Native Americans, oh my goodness, 1%. Um, this other is 0%. I don't know what that would uh, consist of, but 1%. So 2019, okay, so this was what, all for 2019. 2019 um, is worse, 72%. Um, does it say 0% African American? Okay, what year is this? Applicants, this is 2019 applicants. This is 2019 new students. Wow. So the actual new students that entered, there was 0% African-Americans. All right, like, Bailey, let me let you know, like, to be the number three program in the United States and um, the number one program in uh, Texas, like, this is kind of disappointing. And even, like, from just a Hispanic standpoint, right, like, um, you have a huge Hispanic population in Texas, it would be nice to see this even larger. Uh, and this one per zero percent is, like, killing me. All right, all enrolled students, one percent African Americans, 11 percent Hispanics. Yeah, we'd probably have to dive into this chart a little bit more to understand like what's going on. Like from, from the fact of students who applied, so only 5% of, of African-Americans applied, 64% of whites applied, who got accepted um, in terms of students. So none of the African-Americans got accepted um, and who actually enrolled. I don't even know how this this works if it says 0% and then now we have 1% African-American. But uh, we would have to look into that. And then like how these numbers as well, like Hispanics is down to 11%, Asians at 14%. Don't mind my landline. Okay, <laughs> ring it in the back. I, I need it for, uh, for my bundle. <laughs> um, let me, were you guys able to see this? I hope you Oh, we were able to see that. Oh, no, you didn't. Okay, so let me share that. Where am I? Um, let me share this screen with you guys so that you can see the, the metric that I was looking at, okay? Um, and it is this one safe. Okay, so this is the metric that I was looking at. It was just their um, PA program diversity report card um, for 2019. I would say that it's probably a C. It's less than that 3.2% that you guys um, are. <laughs> there that 3.2 GPA that you guys are asking for your students for because like this diversity report doesn't really seem that diverse to me, but mm, I'm just saying. So 2019, we have here Again, gender, um, race, and ethnicity in terms of applicants, okay? Total applicants in 2019, right? So 5% Af um, African-Americans, 18% Asian, 12% Hispanic, 1% uh, Native American. Now, in terms of new students, it's up, uh, which I get... Again, like I don't understand how that works, but uh, I would need somebody to like at Baylor to help me with that. But 72% whites, 0% African Americans, 13% Asians, 13% Hispanic, 2% Native American. Um, so Asians went down, Hispanics went up a little, and so did Native Americans as, and whites. Now, in terms of all enrolled students, um, like, I guess, oh, and so maybe all enrolled uh, in 2019, maybe somebody like decelerated or something, maybe somebody transferred and I don't know what it may be. Uh, but the other kicks up. Okay, cool. Uh, there may be some African Americans in that. Sometimes I consider myself an other because I'm like a hodgepodge of a lot of these um, different ethnicities. Um but it has 1% African-Americans, 14% Asians, Hispanics are at 11%, whites are at 64%, and Native Americans at, are at 1%. So that is the metric that I was looking at, which I felt was a little bit dismal. I didn't really like it. Um, and 
yeah, so I wasn't feeling that. But, you know, whatever. Let's go back to um, the other screen so you guys can see that. Okay, so back to tuition and fees. Um, let me see if I can actually see what that that cost is. View tuition and fees. All right. Uh, okay, so we are here at the tuition and fees section. It is, how long is this program? Um... I don't know. I didn't say. I haven't seen it yet. So we'll we'll look and see how long the program. Try to find out how long the program is. Orthotics and prosthetic program. And what is this? Okay. So physician assistant program. You have your first year at. 45,000, your second year at 44,000, and then your third year, which is a fall term only, at 22,000, about 22,500. Um, so what does that all come out to be? 45 and 45, that's like 90. So I would say 90 plus another 22, let's say 23, right? Is that what we're looking at? I'm just rounding up like 113,000. And is that, does that include your actual room and yearbook fee? Do we have to pay? We have to, did I have a yearbook in PA school? I, I don't remember having a yearbook. Well, this is kind of interesting. Okay, cool. You guys get a yearbook. That's dope. Um, I definitely didn't have a yearbook in my PA program. Um, so I think that would be nice to just kind of have something to look back on. Uh, I don't see anything about like room and board here. Um, so this is solely for the program. It's about $113,000, $114,000 for your full three years um, at this program um, and not including any room and board and food and stuff that you would have to pay for. So uh, it's, it's a lot, you guys, you know, it's, it's expensive to go to PA programs. Uh, but honestly, like when you come out, if you get a really good paying job, it's worth it. You'll be able to pay that thing off in like three years or less if you're able to like, if you're still young and you're able to um, stay at home with your like parents for that first couple uh, of years and just kind of like live a generally comfortable life and kind of just pay off all of these loans, like bank your money and pay off loans. Um, if you're making like $100,000 a year as a PA, um, you know, kind of like after your taxes and stuff, or, you know, if it's like, even if I say it's like 90,000 and you live off of like 40,000, you can pay this off in three years, less than three years, like two and a half. Right. So you just kind of have to look at things like that, see how you can work it out. Um, cause then you'll be completely debt free and then you'll be able to like live your best life and travel and do whatever you want to do with your money. And, um, as, as well as like just being responsible. Right. Okay. Um, so we did that. I don't care about the handbook. We saw faculty. All right, let's, they have a part here about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, DEI. The Baylor College of Medicine School of Health Professionals ensures learners, faculty, and staff are equipped with the knowledge, education, skills, and attitudes needed to provide exceptional, culturally competent service and care. All right, so our process, um, they have a committee, a DEI committee, the subcommittee evolved from multidisciplinary task force, um, da, 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 with the endorsement. Okay, whatever. So they say they have a DEI committee. They are um, <coughs> committed to training up culturally competent providers. <laughs> what that looks like. <clears throat> I honestly don't know. 
But maybe this is something that you guys can try to ask them if you do get, if you're interested in this program and you do get um, an offer for an interview, this would be something that I would ask them about, you know, like how exactly are you committed to, um, you know, training culturally competent individuals and what is your commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion? Those are questions I would ask. And, you know, I've I've gotten a lot more bold in terms of like that, un that understanding just because I know how important a role it plays um, more, so, not just in my learning, but in if, when you come out of PA school in the workplace, like your work environment, um, that plays a really big role. So it's just really good to know. All right. Um, let me see if I can go back. I don't I don't think there's really anything else. I want to see what their um, pants pass rate and stuff is. I don't know where I would find that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Position system program. About the paid profession, student life, alumni, job bank, preceptors. Program history? Nope. Man, I don't know, you guys. Like, I don't know where this would be. And that's something that I would really, I, I'd want to know. Advanced standing, technical standards, information sessions. Okay, let's go to frequently asked questions. Um, do you offer any campus tour? Shadowing, rotations, is there on-campus housing? I don't see it, you guys. I don't see it. I don't see it. All right. So that would be something that I would like to know. Um, I hate having to search for these things because these are the things that are kind of like important. You know, like what is your um, pants pass rate? Um, like we saw like what their makeup in 2019 was, but what was your makeup in, well, like we're in 2022, right? So what was your makeup in 2020 and 2021? Um, that would be nice to see as well. Clinical didactic research service and professionalism, no. Expected graduation competencies, no. I don't know. I don't know where to find it. Um, so again, another thing that it's a little bit disappointing, but whatever, I, I can't find it. If you guys have um, any questions for me, I think now is your time to do so. Okay. And now's the time to ask me whatever questions you may have. Um, and then again, leave uh, a comment for me to tell me what school you want me to probably review on Thursday and I'll try to get to that one. Okay. Um, so King Joe Robinson says, so if I'm black, don't apply. I mean, I don't know if that is exactly what I'm, what I'm saying, or it's, it's not even exactly what I would take from it. It's just a matter of like, for me, diversity and inclusion is important. And so, um, I, I know how difficult PA school is just in general anyways, and having somebody that I like you can relate to um, on different levels is really important uh, to have like that comrade. And I like praise and thank God for uh, the friends that I made that look like me in PA school, because <laughs> like what we went through and kind of the things that we, we saw and that we like, we were like, hmm, you know, or like there was just like a, a different level of understanding. Like we just got each other. Right. Um, and so and that helped that helped tremendously us like get through the stuff um, and get through like the, the trials of PA school. So, no, it's not a matter of like don't apply. You still apply for sure. You apply to all the programs that you're interested in. Um, and then, you know, you can kind of use some of these various different things as platforms and uh, for reform and, and for education, I would say. Um, so uh, if you have the grades, if you have the the hours, um, and is that, was that even there? Let me see something, you guys, uh, before I stop this, because I don't even know if I saw the hours 
of like how many hours you should have gotten. Oh, it says healthcare experience, patient care experience, and shadowing hours are not required for the application. These hours will be considered in the holistic application process. So this is cool. That's one thing that's actually pretty cool about the program. So, you know, there's no like minimum um, hour mark that you need, like healthcare experience or shadowing hour mark that you need to meet. Um, you just kind of have to have them so that you can be looked at holistically as a student. Uh, but yeah, so all of those things, if you have those, those intangibles kind of going for you, apply and then you just see what happens from there. Uh, D. Robinson says, never give up on your dream job. J. Rob? J. Rob. Oh, okay. Joe Robinson. I get it. All right, cool. Um, Paris uh, says, when you have to reapply to a PA program, do you have to reapply all over again or can you edit it? Okay, so great question. And I like this question because this is what I um, tell you guys about all the time. Like, even if you are not a reapplicant, so if it was me, um, what I would do is I would say, hey, you know what? I It's a year before I have to apply because application doesn't open up until May for the, the year that you're really trying to apply. So for this 2022-2023 cycle, the application, the CASPA cycle will open up in well, really the end of April, um, the last, I think it's the last Monday in April. Um, so when it's time for that, um, you know, you, you kind of want to have everything already together and, and ready and done. Um, so what I usually tell you guys to do is start your application now. It's February, start, start putting stuff in. And then you can close that application, like save whatever information you have, and then close it out. You don't have to apply to any schools because it doesn't cost to open up like a CASPA application. It only costs when you apply. Um, so once you've closed that application out and you reopen it when it's time to apply in April, when CASPA opens back up, you click the reapplicant button. Um, and then all of that information that you applied with the year before will transfer over. You, you get to choose what information transfers over for the most part. And I think I did a video about this a while back and I'll just refresh it on um, what information transfers over on your CASPA application, because then that way it saves you time and then like any frustrations and having to put all this information in again. Um, and no, you don't have to reapply all over again per se, uh, but you you will be able to edit that information that you applied with last year. So if you have more hours, you can add that. Uh, you, you would have to put in a whole new set of transcripts, right? Because, you know, luckily, hopefully you would have gone to um, and gotten some extra courses to boost your GPA. Um, so that's always important, uh, but you can just edit information here and there, um, re-upload a personal statement if you've changed it, and then send out the new letters of recommendation um, request to uh, whoever it is that you're requesting it from. Uh, but the general information, like, you know, your address and your, you know, if you're like your tax information, if you're using your parents' stuff or um, anything like that, you don't have to do that. So great question. Um, it says, so how many times did it take for you to get into PA school? So for me, um, it took me, like I, it, I would say maybe, I would say technically three, like I applied three times on the third time I got in. Um, and the second time, I don't think it was quite my fault that I didn't get in. Uh, so, and and it, 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 these are all things that I learned now um, on the back end, but didn't realize it early on. And this is why I started my channel. And this is why I um, I really want like to give you guys this information. Uh, a lot of the mistakes that I made, and then even like some of the people in like the IG world and just like some of my friends made um, and why they had to be reapplicants is because we did not pay close attention to those little nuances of information. So those things that I pointed out, like, oh, you know, your uh, science prerequisite coursework needs to be completed within seven years um, and your overall coursework needs to be completed within 10 years. Those type of things, um, 
I didn't really pay that close attention to those things. I looked at, oh, what's the prerequisite coursework that I need for this? And then I just kept it moving. And, you know, when you're not diligent and you're not focused on like the things that you're interested in and the things that you want and things that you're going after, um, this is when you run into problems. And so for me, for sure, I think that it's important for you guys to really, really dig dig into these programs, like really go through these websites, look at all that information so that you don't make mistakes like I made and mistakes like others made. Um, and they're like costly mistakes, right? Because we're spending this money um, to to do that. So you you want to make sure that you're 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 actually like applying and, and doing things that will get you into um, PA schools and not making stupid, silly mistakes. So uh, just a heads up. Uh, D Robinson, I think finding the money to pay for PA school is a major discouragement discouragement for myself as an African-American. 115000 is a lot. Maybe this is why our numbers are so low. Um, and I mean, I I could see that, I, and I would I would probably uh, agree partially with that. I do think that um, financial burden is definitely a deterrent to applying to some PA programs. But honestly, like this is just one of like three hundred. Um, not every PA program is one hundred and fifteen thousand. Um, there are some PA programs that are tied to uh, their like community colleges that are tied to four-year universities, and they're like 50,000 for the two years or the 27 months, you know, like the three-ish years. Uh, so it's it's really a matter of finding uh, the program that kind of resonates with you, that you would be okay with going to, um, looking at the education that you would be getting from there, um, and then you know, getting your C, you know, that's really what it's about. Um, a lot of times I think people think like, oh, okay, like it's about the name, but the name of the PA program doesn't really matter. What matters is, hey, did you actually get the education to be a good provider? Um, were you able to pass your boards? And now can you go in and be a great PA? Um, and that can happen with with a plethora of programs that do not cost $115,000. So um, just keep that in mind. You guys, my daughter is bothering me right now and I can't, like I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to keep my cool, but. <laughs> Get the balloon and come on and then go. All right. So Paris says three years. What did you do in the meantime and how many programs did you apply to? OK, so, um, yeah. So for me, and and we look at it as as three years, but it was really more so like two. Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't <laughs> like the first time I applied, I was just I applied it. I didn't even realize like what I was doing, right? Like applications had opened up in April and I think I was like applying at like the the bare minimum deadline, like, you know, September 1st or October 1st or November 1st. Like I'm barely putting in those applications in at like October 20, you know, 29th um, or um, August 30th or something. Like it was very much, not well planned, not well looked into. Um, I did look at just like programs in my area and I applied to those. Uh, so the first time I think I applied to maybe four schools. Um, the second time I applied to like um, seven or so schools um, and and maybe a little bit more, maybe nine, because like every time I would get like $55, I would apply to a program. Um, and then, and it, it didn't matter where the, oh, okay, I need to stay in my state. For me, it was always about, I just need to get into PA school. Like that is my goal to become a PA, get into PA school. Um, and then I know once I get into PA school, like I'll be a great PA and it's going to be fine. Um, uh, but the last time I applied to like three schools, you know, I was like, look, this is it. I'm just applying to the schools that I really want to get into that I really think I am like excelling at in terms of like 
being a really super great applicant um, in looking at like their um, their requirements and, and their average student, like what they've allowed in. Um, and it worked. Uh, you know, I got interviews and then I got in. So it, it worked out. So, yeah. Um, D. Robinson said, thank you so much for taking the time out to explain this. Yeah, no problem. Um, if you guys, again, you know, at, you come back on Thursday and you come back with whatever other questions you may have. Um, when I end this broadcast, you can absolutely leave um, more comments in the comment section and leave uh, comments on the schools that you want. Um, and then we can go from there. Uh, oh, there's a couple more questions. So Paris said, I want to attend in my state. There's still some applications open. Should I apply out of state? Yeah. I mean, if you have the money, why not? Absolutely. Um, you just really have to look at those uh, schools that you're, you are going to apply to and make sure that you are hitting the mark. Like that's what it's all about. It's about looking the best, right? Looking your best, like being your best. And so essentially, like for sure, if you can absolutely still apply to programs and you're still like pretty early, like I would say 30 days out, do it. Um, we It is in February though. This is February. And I think most of these deadlines would be March. So if it was me, I wouldn't apply to a March deadline like this late in the game. I would just hold out for April to come and the new CASPA cycle to open up and start applying to those schools. Um, but if it's not like if this is like an, a rolling admission school and it's not like a deadline type of thing where it's you're coming up on it in you know less than a week or uh, seven days or so then yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't do it all right uh and d Ram says was this a heavy burden on your marriage and family while in school if so what do you suggest i do to make sure i balance my family and study time so i mean i think essentially of course yes right like i completely uprooted my family um and we moved uh out of state all all four of us me and my husband my two kids and my dog right so yeah i would say it it was essentially a burden you know my uh oldest daughter had to change schools um and go to a new school and uh leave her friends that she had made behind and we left our 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 community our family our our um you know our people to come so that i can get a better education uh but we talked about it and i i think that that's something that uh was important we really sat down we planned we we said all right like this is it right like do, can i apply to out of state schools was the initial question before i even started applying what is the the feeling on that what would that look like you guys stay here do you come with me um and these are all conversations that i think that any couple um married or not should have uh just so that you can see like where your relationship is going like what um can happen in terms of like some of the turmoil <laughs> you know like when stress is high uh and then go from there because you don't want any like resentment or anything like that um i knew that for me i only I was only going to be out of state for a year and then we would really be right back in um, our home state. Uh, and, and I worked very hard at finding a program that would cater to that. And so, you know, praise God, I did. So I went to school like in in this in the state that my school was located in for a year. And then when it came to clinical year, um, I was back in my home state with my family and my friends. And we were like, you know, we were back. OK, now for that year, it was for sure. You know, it wasn't the easiest thing, but it was so great having my family there. Um, and then when it came to studying, I was very regimented and I, I talk about this all the time. Um, I would still like make wake up and make breakfast and get everybody ready for like school because my like I said, my oldest daughter was in school, like she's in elementary school. She's in middle school now. It's just crazy. Um, and my little one, she was like not even two yet. Like, so, um, you know, that was an interesting transition, but we would do that. And then I would come home at like five-ish, six o'clock, spend time with them. And then they went to bed. My kids went to bed at like 730. And then I would study 
from like 7.30 to 10, like, you know, my husband would be there watching basketball game or something like we're just kind of in our space together. Um, we're still communicating, but I'm still studying, doing things like that. Um, and and we did that for the year and um, it worked out and our, our, our foundation stayed solid. And um, and I think a lot of that was just kind of due to my my faith as well, our faith in God, um, you know, not to be corny or anything, but having that foundation also really, really helped. So um, I think the first thing that you should do in terms of trying to find your balance is talking it over with your significant other on what this might look like, um, having them understand, you know, really like, hey, when it's time to study, like I have to study because I have to pass because we're paying so much money, right? Um, but this is ultimately for our future. And as long as you guys are both on board or, and both in that, that same space, you should be okay. Should be good. Okay. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I will definitely um, put out what school I'll be doing. Uh, it'll probably be Thursday morning. I'll put out like the reminder on, on the school, the program that I will review. I will choose that program maybe tomorrow. Um, and then we'll go from there. And then uh, we should be back to like our regularly scheduled program in terms of me um, doing these uh lives every Tuesday. However, um, I, you know, if I do have to change it, just keep in mind, I will let you guys know ahead of time. Um, just be like on, on the Sunday before, uh, if I'm picking up extra shifts or anything like that. Okay. Um, and then Paris has one more question. She said, uh, is March 1st, is March 1st too late? I got rejected from one school, but I was thinking an application to more that are still open. And so like, again, for me, I would think March 1st is too late. I would not apply to a program that has a deadline that is March 1st. That is just a Donna, right? If you have the money and if you want to, then for sure, go ahead and do that. But for me, I wouldn't do that because I think that it's, I don't think it gives it enough time for me to really look like a good applicant. Like this is the deadline, right? So you imagine CASPA opened up in April of last year. There are hundreds of applications that have gone through prior to your application coming in right now, like with, you know, like what, what is that? Um, seven days left, no, nine days left of the year, uh, of the month until the deadline is open. I wouldn't do it. I personally wouldn't. But this is something that you have to choose for yourself. Uh, but if it was me, I would just save those that $55 um, and make my application right for this upcoming cycle, which will literally open up in like 60 days. Um, and so I would do, you know, what I can do to try to better myself as a student, get some more hours, uh, you know, things like that um, under my belt and kind of just prepare myself to apply um, once Casper reopens for the new cycle in April. That's just my, that would be me. I'm just saying. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, go ahead and subscribe, like the video, uh, watch my rebroadcast, go to the playlist and see all of the other schools that I've um, done thus far. Um, drop a, a comment for me on what schools you want me to do next and we'll go from there. All right. Talk to you guys next time. Bye.